Hi everybody. I am going to talk about guest salt therapy which is made use of as a therapeutic intervention in social casework practice. Frederick Pearls and his wife Laura Pearls founded Gestalt therapy in the year 1940. It is a humanistic existential counseling and psychotherapy. As humanism, it stresses the importance of one's own inborn capacity for growth and change and as existentialism, it focuses on the responsibility people have for their own lives and their choices. Primarily, existentialism is concerned with awareness of our being in the world. As an existential approach, it is grounded on the here and now and emphasizes that each individual is responsible for his or her own destiny. The clients are asked to bring any concern of the past or of the future to the present and experience it directly. The classical gestalt developed by Pearls concentrates on self-awareness, whereas the contemporary gestalt developed by the followers of the Pearls concentrates more on relationship, one's relationship to oneself, to others and to the world. Because of its phenomenological basis, gestalt therapy emphasizes the subjective human experience which is more reliable than explanations and interpretations. The word gestalt cannot be directly translated into English language. It includes pattern, configuration, form and whole. We tend to perceive our environment in terms of whole and we make meaning or create a form or gestalt from what we experience. In simple terms, gestalt is a figure in relation to what is in the background. At the end of this talk, learn the key concepts in gestalt therapy including unfinished business, avoidance, layers of neurosis, contact and resistance to contact, understand the roles and functions of the gestalt therapist, gain a grasp of the process of gestalt therapy and learn the techniques of gestalt therapy. Let me now explain the key concepts of gestalt therapy. Gestalt therapy aims at integration of sometimes conflicting dimensions within personality. The client is assisted to re-own parts of himself or herself that have been disowned and to integrate them. The now in gestalt therapy is of great importance. If the past seems to have a significant influence on the present attitudes or behavior, it is brought to the present and lived as much as possible. In a way, the client enacts the past events as though he is living it now. If, for example, one had a traumatic experience with a significant person in the past, the client is asked to become the hurt child and dialogue directly with a significant person in fantasy and thus there is a reliving of the hurt and a potential to change it to understanding and resolution. The first key concept is the unfinished business. Unfinished business is the same as unexpressed feeling like resentment, rage, hatred, pain, anxiety, grief, guilt and abandonment. When feelings are not fully experienced in awareness, they usually linger in the background and they enter into the present and interfere with the effective contact with oneself and others. The unfinished business will hang on until it is faced and dealt with by the client. The unexpressed feelings seek completion and when they become powerful enough, they make the individual preoccupied and weary and engage in compulsive behavior and self-defeating behavior and experience oppressive energy. 
The unfinished business can also manifest itself in bodily blockage thus having a physical symptom. Resentment seems to be the worst kind of unfinished business. When people have resentment, they are stuck and so they need to express their resentment fully. The impasse or stuck point is a situation of believing that one is unable to support oneself and thus seek external support. One copes with the situation by manipulating others, especially by playing roles of weakness, helplessness, stupidity and foolishness. In therapy, the client is encouraged to fully experience his condition of being stuck. The next concept is avoidance. Avoidance is a means used by clients to evade facing unfinished business and experiencing the uncomfortable emotions associated with the unfinished business. In therapy, the client is encouraged to experience unexpressed feeling and express whatever feeling one is afraid of facing. Let me now mention about the concept layers of neurosis. In order to achieve psychological maturity, one must strip off five layers of neurosis. First, the phony. The phony layer is the way we react to others in stereotypical and inauthentic ways playing games and getting lost in our roles. Two, the phobic. In this, one attempts to avoid emotional pains associated with the seeing aspects of oneself that one prefers to deny. 3. The impasse. It is a point where we are stuck and we feel a sense of deadness and nothingness. 4. The implosive. At this level, we expose our defenses and begin to make contact with our genuine self. 5. The explosive. In this final stage, we let go of phony roles and pretenses by releasing a tremendous amount of energy that we have been holding in by pretending to be what we are not. The next concept is contact and resistances to contact. An effective contact will mean interacting with nature and with others without losing one's sense of individuality. Indeed, contact is a lifeblood of growth. We all develop resistance to contact first of all by the five layers of neurosis and also by the five ego defense mechanisms. They are introjection, projection, retroflexion, deflection and confluence. Let me tell you first about introjection. Introjection means taking in and accepting others beliefs and standards uncritically and these beliefs and standards always remain alien to us since they are not assimilated. Projection. In projection, we disown certain aspects of ourselves and assign them to others or environment just because those aspects do not coincide with our self-image. <coughs> what we disown is put on to other people and we avoid taking responsibility for what we actually are. Retroflexion. It is doing to oneself what we would like to do to others or what we would like others to do to us. For instance, we may be afraid of directing an aggression towards someone else and so we would direct that aggression to us and injure ourselves. Deflection. It is a
by posture, by keeping one's body tight and closed and by speaking with a restricted voice. In therapy, once the clients become aware of the resistance being expressed in their body by certain symptoms, they can be encouraged to delve deep into those physical symptoms, for example, by exaggerating their tight mouth and shaking legs, they can realize how they have been blocking energy from free expression. Let me describe the roles and functions of Gestalt therapist. The therapist needs to pay attention to the client's body language. Verbal communication may be a lie and nonverbal or body language tells a true story. Therefore, the therapist concentrates his attention on the client's posture, movements, gestures, voice and hesitations. Thus, the client may be asked to speak for and become his or her gestures or body parts. For example, what do your legs speak? Can you carry on your conversation between your right leg and the left leg? If your body were to speak now, what would it say are some of the questions asked. Besides attending to the body language, the therapist needs to focus on the relationship between language patterns and personality, since speech patterns often reveal the feelings, thoughts and attitudes. By focusing on the overt speaking habits, the client is made aware of himself or herself to see if the words match what he or she is feeling within. Some of the expressions that keep a distance between the client and the inner world of the client can be challenged. For example, a client may use the word it instead of I. The sentence it is always miserable to be left alone can be changed into I always feel miserable to be left alone. The sentence you feel furious when people criticize you in public can be changed into I feel furious when people criticize me in public. The therapeutic process. In Gestalt therapy, the relationship between awareness and energy plays a vital role. When awareness is scattered, energy flow diminishes. The therapist usually suggests experiments in awareness focusing. In fact, every psychological problem can be dealt with and resolved as a polarized conflict between two aspects of one's personality. There are four stages in this therapeutic process. First, the emergence of the problem. Second, working with the external polarities. Third, working with internal polarities. Fourth, integration. Let me explain each of these stages. The emergence of the problem. The client brings into awareness with increasing intensity a major conflict in the here and now of the therapy session. While taking increased responsibility for one's thoughts, feelings and sensations, the client becomes aware of the connection between verbal and nonverbal behaviors. The client experiences feelings and sensations and can also discover their links to body awareness and later give voice to those selected physical areas. Here, what will be useful are the body correlates of verbal expression like breathing pattern, hand gestures, voice tone and posture. Now, let me tell something about working with external polarities. At this level, the growing tension is taken seriously to be explored with an external dialogue. Whether the problem is an intra or interpersonal one, it is good to initiate a conversation between the client and the significant other. Literally, two chairs can be arranged to represent the two persons, the self and the significant other, between whom is a tension or conflict. The significant other could be the person with whom feelings are currently experienced or historically have been experienced or even hypothetically can be experienced. Now, let me say something about working with internal polarities. 
It is something similar to the working with external polarities, but happens to be internal polarities of two significant and opposing aspects within the individual's personality. It is assumed that the more fully each pole of tension is dramatized and experienced, the more likely it can be easily resolved. While each pole expands its territory in awareness, the tension may be painful to the point of the client feeling the tension as irresolvable and unbearable. This is the implosive layer of personality and a necessary precondition for the formation of a new gestalt. Now about the integration. In the final stage, what takes place is the resolution of the internal conflict resulting from a major reorganization and the reperception of the problem. The conflict rises more powerfully into awareness. The more powerful the conflict, the more intense is the awareness. The more intense the awareness, the more powerful will be the potential for release. Dramatically, the release results in a spontaneous uncontrolled physiological outpouring like tears, laughter and rage, the expression of the explosive layer of personality. At this level, one observes that the aspects of that were opposing each other in consciousness move to accept each other's actual identity with the result that the client experiences a fresh flow of life energy an increased capacity for enjoyment and a more expanded awareness into areas of existing and still unresolved tensions. Now let me tell you about the techniques of this therapy. Through the techniques employed in this therapy, the clients experience internal conflicts, resolve inconsistencies and dichotomies and work through an impasse that prevents completing of unfinished business and thus gain full awareness. Keeping in mind the thrust of the gestalt therapy, one could invent many techniques. Some of the techniques frequently used in gestalt therapies are dialogue exercise, making the round, I take responsibility for playing the projection, reversal technique, rehearsal exercise, exaggerating exercise, staying with the feeling, gestalt approach to dream work. Let me tell you about each one of these techniques and let me begin with a dialogue exercise. This is the one most commonly used and people understand this as a main therapy. Usually different aspects of our personalities are in conflict with one another. Normally, polarization takes place in a conflict situation. We can imagine a top dog and an underdog. Both dogs fight for their existence and one tries to control the other. This conflict is rooted in the mechanism of introjection by which aspects of others are incorporated into one's ego system. The empty chair technique is one way of getting the client to externalize the introject. The client is asked to sit on one chair and be the top dog and act out its role and later he or she is asked to sit on the other chair and act out the role of the underdog. Now, the conflict becomes too obvious and powerful. Subsequently, the conflict is resolved by the acceptance and integration of both sides. Next technique is a making the round. The individual in a group setting is asked to go around and speak to or do something with each member of the group, thus confronting, risking, disclosing the self, experimenting with the new behavior and growing and changing. For example, the person who has a please me driver has no guts to say no to others 
can be asked to go to each member of the group and say no emphatically. The other members of the group might overpower the person with a no much louder and the individual shouts aloud and affirms his or her no thus gaining confidence in saying no to people. Another technique is I take responsibility for. When a person feels rejected, he or she is asked to say I take responsibility for my being rejected. This saying facilitates the individual to realize he or she needs to accept his or her feelings instead of projecting them onto others. Playing the projection is another one. The kernel of projection is seeing clearly in another the very things one does not want to see in oneself and accept them as one's own. In fact, so much of energy is spent in denying one's feelings and attributing them to others. For example, one has problem in accepting the moral weakness of others. This may be the projection in the sense that the person is not willing to accept his or her own moral weakness and that is projected onto others. Next is the reversal technique. For example, a clean freak can be asked to wear his or her dirty clothes for three consecutive days. An overly submissive person can be asked to be assertive during the session with others. Let me mention about the rehearsal exercise. Many of the roles we play in society are rehearsed in fantasy and when it comes to actual performance, we falter out of fear. When the clients openly share their rehearsal loud with the therapist or the group, they begin to understand the dynamics of the rehearsal. The exaggerating exercise is another technique. Usually, clients communicate through their movements, postures and gestures which have meaning. These nonverbal behaviors can be exaggerated which intensifies the feeling attached to them and makes the inner meaning clearer. Trembling, shaking hands and legs, slouched posture and bent shoulders, clenched fists, tight frowning, facial grimacing crossed arms are all some of the gestures that can be exaggerated. In the same way, clients can be asked to repeat certain words or statements they used louder and louder. Next, let me tell you about staying with the feeling. We usually avoid unpleasant situations and feelings. Clients want to avoid unpleasant feelings. The therapist can ask the clients to stay with whatever feelings they are currently having and thus go deeper into them, gain courage to face them and be willing to endure the pain necessary for unblocking and making way for newer levels of growth. Lastly, gestalt approach to dream work. Unlike in psychoanalysis, in Gestalt therapy, the dreamer is asked to narrate the dream in the present as though reliving the dream in the present. The dreamer can also be asked to identify himself or herself with any one of the dream elements and to carry on a dialogue. It is assumed that different parts of a dream are expressions of one's own contradictory and inconsistent sides. Thus, every person and every object in the dream is a projected part of the dreamer. For Freud, dream is a royal road to the unconscious, whereas for pearls, it is a royal road to integration. Let me sum up. Gestalt therapy is a form of existential psychotherapy established by Frederick Pitts Pearls and Laura Pearls in the 1940s. It focuses on the phenomenological method of awareness where feeling, perceiving and acting are differentiated from interpreting and reshuffling the pre-existing attitudes of individual. 
clients and therapists dialogue or communicate their phenomenological perspectives. Differences in perspectives become the focus of experimentation and continued dialogue. The goal for clients is to become aware of their self in terms of what and how they are doing and how they could change themselves and learn self-acceptance and value themselves. Gestalt therapy focuses more on process than content. The emphasis is on what is being done, thought and felt at the moment rather than on what was, might be, could be or should be. Let me sign off now and hope to see you in another session. Thank you.